Okay. So with the group data set to replace the ECS groups, I actually need to start going through and doing that. Uh, starting with, well, here, I guess. Oh, group data in the simulations set, simulation set. So we get that, come on. Um, do we move on to a whole bunch of errors cropping up from this. Now I can't set up ECS groups all the way up here anymore because I need to have the importer available at the same time. So move it down here after that. And after this point. So create the new index generator, then we want to do success equals. I also we need dependency importers. Not that. IT name. Okay, yeah, this is all actually gone, so just A dynamic group, which is that, and standard move of iterator. That will be null pointer now, so we need like a just that, and it's just that. This also needs to change. We don't do that anymore. We're going to have to iterate up. Porter equals P simulation set. Import state data is expecting groups for whatever reason. I forget why. Import state data, it takes in groups. Why? Why does it take in groups? I don't know why. I think it does. Not yet. I'll add it if I need it again. Get back to the import state. That's gone and that's gone. So it's just those.
Next is uh, something set up ECS groups. And then we'd also have to do like dot set persistent importer, which is standard move of P importer. System importer. What's that? Generating of tr generation of translations. That is. Hmm. Group. Uh, so this is in the in indices. For that. That's what I'm looking for. These are from yeah. state data yeah this is not here anymore okay don't build the tests okay so that's uh, another part done for the moment Let's have a little look, shall we? At this part. Uh, 
Very interesting. So this is group one, which is very wrong. This should actually, so this is returning, yeah. It was uh, putting in the group value, not. the actual group we wanted. So that looks a lot better. Yeah. Okay. So it changes just to be like So that's uh, FOE CS group removed from that. Whoop. And that's gone. Export is, even, is not even compiled in anymore, so I don't really care about this right now. This will be replaced later. So we'll do this. Wipe these guys out. done close to the right mm -hmm. okay so now I need to make sure that the translations are working are correct import state mm -hmm. all this stuff is lovely so what I want to do is come down to the translations group dependencies Compared to that, yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to say A doesn't have any dependencies. This does, and group A is like 128, something ridiculous. And then what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to integrate because I only I'm only using translations for this is for the first one, right? So this will have a group dependency of A. For this one, which will be not working at all. Because this is the, the dependency for that. Because I'm assuming they all start at zero, aren't I? Or I'm not even like. So no dependencies here. Yeah. So now we do have a dependency in C, which is A. Go in, group zero. Target group is in 
indices of p group which has a is null pointer because I haven't set up the group data because it's down here e yeah Of course, I can't do this because of that. What I have to do instead is go through. OK, I need to set, figure out the group translations. Can I integrate them into the creation of the importers? Because they're so tightly connected with the importers. No, I can't because I have, I, it'd be up here. This one wouldn't. This one would not have uh, data to create the translation yet. Hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a translation up here. Get the dependency of this and set it here. I need to do it here. Of course, I'm just I'm just basing the fact that they're in a street in. I am presuming that they are in a specific order like that, and that they all start at zero. Hmm. I don't think so. Let's do
Okay. So that's okay. As long as I'm assuming I'm always going to be zero based. I want to have to take a quick think about this. Do I want to stay on a zero based system? Or do I want to be able to set them arbitrarily? Like starting at 15 or something like that. Some really weird combinations. All right, I don't have to. Like if this is assuming to be zero, you know, fine. But what if it's not? In fact, if that's the case, then I can always just, I could just do a name. I could just do a list of names. A, you know. And not have to worry about just A and then just the data and just the whatever. Instead of doing this thing. Is it wise? Should I do that? Do I want to be have the ability to move items around? Hmm. Okay, you know what? No, I will do. I'm going to not do a zero base system. I'm actually going to properly allow for ridiculous, whatever, arbitrary numbers for groups. Just in case, like in the future, you remove a previous group and all that nonsense. Ability to perhaps remove intermediate data sets that don't do anything. Which means we're going to have to do some f fun business around here. Because this is probably starting, this is zero based. I have zero based nonsense going on all over the place. So, what I need is I am going to change up how we grab out the data. Right now, importer base, we're just grabbing out a standard string. So I'm going to need a struct of importer mm, dependency set. Name and ID group, which is group value. And then we're going to have, whoops, that be what comes out of here. Which means we need to go in here, change that up. It'll be in here somewhere. Here. It goes into here. And there, and it's that dot name. Okay, we return that back to what did I want to do? Like, that's uh, basically nothing. Ooh, but that's not. So we'll just put this in.
Okay, put that in. So what's left is just that minor change and then this thing that I'm doing right now. Okay, mm -hmm. to the close to the right. So come down here, we have dependencies. We get the dependencies, so it's now that. is going to be changed up a little bit so this is going to be a vector of these instead so it's not that back out then we got to go down to these transitive dependencies um, so it's not that it's Sorry. Oh, dot. Then we come on down to here where we're getting the dependencies for this. Then we're going to generate translations using this instead. name not ID group but rather uh, iterator dot group value fo set Cannot format argument. Here. Oh, oh, okay. It's one of these. Yeah, it's not uh, dependent. It's uh, name. Imagine the same thing elsewhere. Okay, uh, is there anyone else you're not going to tell me about?
Okay, let's see. Dependency iterator this. So let's generate translations for each of these. Let's see what it looks like. Hmm. The data B, that's nothing for that. A, nothing for that. The data that would have A at like 128 or so. Yeah. So new translation says, hey, 0, 128 goes to whatever that is, which is very high. So that looks about right. Ooh, maybe not. What's going on with this? Persistent? Okay. Did I? Oh, I moved it already. Um, hmm. Put this after. Or... You know what? No, no. So we're doing half an hour. Okay. Any errors? No, 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 no. Okay. So get this fix changed up. Now supports arbitrary Arbitrary or they'll still be in order, though. They'll be in incrementing order, just not necessarily together. In a in contiguous order. There are cases where such Something like that. Okay. Let me scratch that off when I find a pen. Things to do. ECS groups, the ECS data. Oh, that means also removing. this right because yeah so now I just remove these a few items and call it there groups goes away groups groups goodbye T 
to search systems. Yes, groups versus general data. Very close to that. Come on. Okay. I'll get rid of groups. I'm going to pause it here and figure out my next move. Okay, so next part is I've, rem I've removed or deleted the resource ID header. So I need to remove uh, uses of faux resource ID from uh, everywhere else. So places like here. We're no longer doing this. We're... Uh, not that it's oh, ID like that instead just leave it like that ID okay can I just like that all across the place and then we'll see where it fails because uh, it's looking for Oh boy, a lot of changes on that one. Um, but they seem to make sense. Run it, make sure it's running engine, yeah. Okay. that okay <clears throat> so with that we need to get back to importation now the next interesting thing was going to be import state loading resource definitions which is going to have to tie in very much with loading of hmm yeah okay we'll just take this one step at a time first of all we have to, we're going to go through all the groups like this we do importer and we like import resource definitions. 
can be like not this it'll be like resource just resources for the moment pointer to that and then eventually you would do the same thing down here for just the latest resources we need a new function on the importer base space hmm I have to I'm hmm. the importers that's a fun little that's a fun little thing Okay, don't worry about it for the moment. I'll worry about it in a moment instead of whatever. It's going to be a problem. It's going to have to be rethought again. I don't want to have to add and remove. Wait, remove importer. Where's the adding one? What? Oh. No, get resource. Hmm. Actually, that is, where is that importer? It's right there. Whoa, that's way in a different place. Let's put it down here with the room of importer. Okay. So when we're re importing resource definitions, this is for all of the items. So we have to go through much like with res well, not with a resource, but much like in the same vein as import state data. We need to go recursively through if we reach the end, we're returning true, but it's not that, it's that path instead. If that is, so we do that, the same thing here. If it's a directory, just skip it. Another way around. Uh, 
After iterator not if not is regular file, then we'll kind of say the little thing where it's like, oh, could not, maybe. Yeah, if it's that, and I don't know what it is and why it's in here. Possible corruption. We'll return false. Otherwise, we are it's a regular file. Continue. Hmm. Now this is an interesting thing. I have all of the import functions in one location here. I have it as a part of this class. But technically, like the import functions, I'd really want to have on all classes. Or rather, I'd actually want to have them in a single location. But I don't. Um, I don't want to actually use like a singleton kind of thing. It's kind of not great. I what I do know I need to move import functions out of here. I really do. How? I'm not sure yet. Okay. <clears throat> let's do this. First of all, let's... Um, do I even want to parse this? No, I'd have to just check. Is it... Actually, I probably have it up here. Open the file. We have it as a node. If we couldn't open it, we return false. Then we gotta try to read it. Well, the catch stuff for this, basically, uh, I'd be the same as this, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, more exception, whatever. Okay, just for the moment, let's do this. Let's do this exact same thing. We hit this stuff from node. To actually get to this point, um, make sure it builds. And then if it builds, then we go to this point and we see what values we're getting back out based on the file we're at. Currently all resources should have this. So what's the key? Um, let's go to debug side. 
tell me the key. Show me the key. Vertex descriptor one for Okay. Okay, so this looks to be okay. So what I can do then is, for the moment, I have to do this. If it fails, yeah, it fails. But otherwise, now that I have... Uh, otherwise, we need to actually call this with uh, node... I need to do like resource create info, info star. That. And then we have, okay. We now have it. What do we do with it? Well, actually, one thing I can do. is a void. This should really be a bool or something that returns an error. But it's not quite there yet. Okay, let's say we get reach this point. Um, never actually got here. Very interesting. Very interesting. There, because this is before I even have any import functions to call. Yeah, okay. Um, let's go back to the application and move the, that higher. Yeah, more importer. No, because I actually create it inside of there. I don't have access to it. Hmm. This is a bit of a pickle. Okay, 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 okay. I need to have some kind of global... St oh, I hate saying this. But I do need some kind of global state that's going to hold like arbitrary importers for this. Unfortunately. And I'm not sure how to do that. How would I do this? This is going to require a pause while I get a drink, think about it, and research. 
Just a second. Hmm. I need to. Mm. Okay, it has to be something that kind of works around this. It really has to be. Let's okay. Let's change. Mm, let's change this up a little bit. Let's see if let's do a couple of loose functions. Actually, let's do something like this: importers .hpt, like that, and importers .cpp, and we'll have a similar thing for exporting once we get there but um <clears throat> let's say okay we well, first of all we need to struct our importer base you before we declare that we'll have hmm i'm thinking What we'll do is we'll have in here, this will be like include importers.hpp. We'll have something that's like this. So include vector. But it's not going to be that. It's going to be some kind of class like foe importer generator star. Something like that. So we'll have a class, a very simple class for the moment, for importer. It'll basically have the function that we have in distributed YAML currently, this. So this will be a virtual equals zero of that. get something more lively for me to listen to. It's not very good. That maybe. Okay, we'll do it with that. Bring that in, close that up. We'll have another class of static generators, no source, local generators, I guess. Um, Anonymous generators? I don't know. We'll just call it generators. Whatever. A bunch of pointers of, like, um, what am I going to call it? Uh, for the functions, import the function registrar. I guess. Um, we'll have a couple of that 
This is like a this. There's only one of this, so it's like a single, uh, like a singleton of some sort, except without using the singleton pattern. Like this will be like once per application kind of deal. Yeah, uh, and then we have the same thing for add. Um, that so we have a couple of functions that go along so these are free functions Check registrars. Mm. If it's already there, return false. We don't want to re-register something that's already there. Registrar. Then what we're going to do is run the registrar on all available generators. Where possible. Then we'll have to do uh, maybe the responsibility of the registrar to determine if the generator is compatible with the functions that it wants to. So the so the registrar in the shared objects will already know what it's compatible with because you developed it with it in mind. Yes. So, do something along the lines of. I, 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 yeah. Quarter generator. Is that it? Those could really be like a couple of loose functions. Yeah, whatever. I mean, could I? Re-register something more than one time? No, that doesn't make any sense. So it would be uh, p registrar and then tries to register functions on the generator that's provided. We'll return true. Yeah. Yeah. That can work. Um, we can't do ranges. Um, registrars start begin. Do 
that. We're also going to need some kind of some form of include mutex. Was a unique lock or guard? Which one was uh, locks? Mutex. Mutex. Mm, mutex. Concurrency. Uh, I'm so, Whoa. Okay. Control F. Mutex. No. Thread support. Go block is better. For each of these, we're just going to do call it mute, mutex, just to be super safe. You can only be in here one at a time. A bit slower, but like this is this is something that happens so incredibly rarely that the synchronization is basically worth it to prevent those really rare bugs, to my mind. OK. Mm, if iterator star iterator equals p registrar, then we found it. OK, so what, do we, what we'd rather do is not equals, then continue. Otherwise. register functions from associated generators. Um, to remove from registrars dot erase iterator turn false okay so we got to do something similar for as that for generators Registrars auto make sure if iterator equals p generator sorry generators turn false otherwise and place it to the back p generator. So we've got to run p registrar register functions. That's the register, yeah. So for p generator, amazing. Then we're done here, and then something similar down here. Um, scope lock.
equals that. Okay, if not equal that, then we continue. Otherwise, we found... We don't need to run deregistering because by the generator just not existing, all the functions that were registered to it no longer are. Yeah. Okay, uh, importers, it's the last thing. Oh, cute, just crashed. Okay, this would then mean in distribu distributed YAML, we've got to go to include. Or so HPP, we're going to have to change this up to be instead based on that. What's going to happen is this functionality where we have the import functions are instead going to get registered to this and then all the instances, the instanced uh, objects of this go back to its generator to search through for import functions. That should help alleviate the fact that like I don't have to it also means like I can actually keep a more close uh, control over the import functions because I don't want to accidentally register one to like some one of these and then have it all off elsewhere and then the like the fun the DLL or the shared object that had those fun import functions is removed for whatever reason and then this tries to call into it, and I, then I have a bad day. I don't want that. So then all, if I have it registered in these generators, which are directly in the importer system, then I can easily like, have this. As long as I um, properly take care of synchronization here, in its one location, the importers can come in and use them in a safe manner and once I remove them it's just removed from there and which also by extension means it's removed from all the instanced versions that's the theory anyways so what we need we need to these functions for the moment I guess or rather just copy them Right, because Clang crashed. Well, the language server crashed, as always. Hmm. So we got that, which is a uh, public of this. Which means I need one more function, which is this one. What I'm not particularly interested in is the fact that this um,
It is an instanced object. But I'll deal with it for now. Um, I... Okay, we'll just... We'll actually just kind of put it in this little separate place for the moment, please. Include map and functional and file system and basically all this. Okay, I don't need importer base since that's just returning a... Oh no, well he needs it, but I don't need it for the other one. Don't need that. Would I even, really? No, I don't. In CPP, I would. it up for the moment. This is a mouthful. This is going to be a large set of symbols. Or would it? It wouldn't have to be, since uh, these things wouldn't have to be exported. Or would they? No. No, they wouldn't. So these are basically the same as... Well, actually, for this, we we'll literally just return uh, create that group and state data path. Thank you very much. And these will be copies of what's already in here. Importer base, that's the one I'm looking for right here. And removing. So those should be the same. Yes, I didn't actually create those ones yet. Because those would be the responsibility. And then I need, so a function registrar. Hmm. I'll add to the application for the moment, actually. 
because this is what it is. It's going to be, basically it's gonna be this set right here. Test register public that. Public these. These are finals. going to do is like p generator these I need to try, I need to uh, make sure that if, um, hmm. dynamic cast of Distributed YAML generator. Because I do, I would know this in advance. And that. Then we're going through and doing this. That, 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 that. Add importer these. And of course, I need this for the moment. And then eventually be the opposite if. Whoops. Uh, and then we have, what are we doing? So, importers. We'd already have this. So what we want is... Um, <laughs> more nonsense hat. Okay, this is another old set. And what I want to do is call add importer generator. We'll try the generator first, where we have Redefinition of this. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, 
header guards, and I need the header guards here too. Importers, distributed YAML, okay. Uh, does not return a function, you're correct. Okay, test registrar is whatever, test generator has nothing inside of it. We have the generator, it's not dead yet. Do this, test generator now has these import functions, very nice. Um, Then I need to bring in the these importers import state. I need a function that actually like calls. Mm. Okay, you know what? I'll just like. Uh, that and we'll just include um, actually no I can't do that I need to actually star well I try to figure out a way to do this so what we're going to do is in import state we're going to go in here and we're going to have generators Okay, we go through this one instead, right? Bam. Okay. And then we'd want to do the same thing up here as well. Right? Should be down here somewhere. Almost. We'll just override it. Oh yeah. 
Oh yeah, let's actually implement the damn thing. What a novel idea. Okay, and then the interesting bit would really be when I go down to importing resource definitions, and we go actually into that, and we actually see, hey, you know, what uh, function do we actually have? We don't have any, because we don't have a point or two who generated us. Because that's not something that even is a concept here yet. So, um, Our generator star P generator, whoever generated us. Um Okay, not quite yet. Let's just set it. Symbiotic relationship. Oh, the horror. But it does mean I can do this. Okay. Oh, come on. Come on. No, nothing. You're just not going to work. Or, or
thing is idle. What's going on? Uh, nothing is going on. Ugh. As long as this is fast to start up, I guess I'll be happy enough. Hmm. Okay, we're here. Great. Now we have a bunch of stuff. Let me import functions, right? No. No. Oh, I never set the generator. Good job, me. Um. importer uh, really hmm I thought that would have been proliferated through already Of course. This is a little bit of a mess for sure. Port of that, distributed YAML. Brings in this. Whatever, just do it so I can actually check if whatever I'm doing is even sane. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, importer base. Distributed YAML. It's a... No. It's a that type now, okay? For God's sakes. Let me just see if my logic is okay. Swear. Close that, close that. Close this. Okay. Great. Do it there and we do it here. Uh, great. Okay. This is not my night. Okay, great. We're here. P M generator is something that's real. Imp import functions is, are all of these. That's great. <clears throat> so, if 
I go back to application and YAML importer dot uh, set gen becomes test generator. That should mean that the rest of the of the, of the application should run perfectly fine using the registered functions from there. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, good job, me. No, no, it's not working. Why? Oh, yes, um, I didn't change over distributed YAML to use that new one yet. Proof of concept, does it work? Yes, it does. Uh, okay. That should mean that once I change around, okay, I'm going to have to leave it here because I'm, I'm just out of time, but I have a proof of concept of something that of a better system for registering, deregistering arbitrary versions of import functions and importer types and all and making sure that no matter what order they are added or removed, it'll still stay mostly safe and won't crash mysteriously. But I'm going to, have to work on that again tomorrow to, to clean it up, refine it, and everything with that. All right. Cheers.